Well, I'm so delighted to see everybody. I'm Georgia Deacon from one of the practitioners from CSL White Rock. And I'm not going to say anything else because I want to have our wonderful speech, wonderful <laughs> musician, Ivan Boudreau, to play us a song. Thank you, Ivan. Thanks, Georgia. Sitting on a bench in the rain, hats on the ground, waits for spirit change. Ask him how he's doing, look him in the eye. Everybody needs a little love in their life. So live with love, love with grace. Put a smile on a stranger's face. Little things you say and do. With love, grace, <clears throat> gratitude Tells me he's hoping every nickel and dime Will help buy blankets cause it's cold outside Not enough beds to keep his friends warm A little bit of kindness never does any harm Live with love, love with grace Put a smile on a stranger's face Little things you say and do With love, grace Gratitude Share some love Along the way, it will come back to you someday. We yearn for things. We haven't got to live too fast, race the clock. For all the joy we've been through, ain't nothing wrong with gratitude. So live with love, love with grace. Put a smile on a stranger's face. Little things you say and do. With love, grace, and gratitude. Yay, that's so amazing. Thank you, Ivan. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you back. Ah, fantastic. Um, welcome, everyone. And thank you for anybody who's a newcomer today. We're delighted to see you and glad you could join us here at CSL White Rock. And as I've already mentioned, my name is Georgia Neekin, and I'm one of the spiritual practitioners here at CSL White Rock. And as a representative of this center, I recognize that I'm a settler on this land. I'm grateful and honored to live and operate on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples and that other members of this gathering are working and living in the traditional land of many other Indigenous peoples. As CSL White Rock is committed to the vision of a loving, vibrant world that works for all, we are committed to uplifting Indigenous voices, respecting traditional lands, and working with communities towards reconciliation. I thank the First Peoples who continue to live and care for the Mother Earth, all that is above and all that is below. So we're an inclusive community, spiritual community. We're a learning center. We honor many paths as the one. And our teaching, our philosophy is based on four, four beliefs. And the first one is there's one life and it's the source of all life and all things. Number two, we are spirit having a human experience. I love that. We are spirit 
I say that to myself every day. And third, my husband's favorite, my first husband, nothing outside of us needs to change in order for us to be happy. And fourth, we are all here to walk each other home. So welcome, welcome. Have I been muted the whole time? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Don't you just love the joys of uh, touch pads uh, on my iPad there? So uh, I'm, did I announce who I am yet? Just give me, no. Okay, anyways, I'm Tamara Rossander. I'm the spiritual director here at Centers for Spiritual Living, newly paneled, newly licensed uh, minister. So I was so grateful to have a group of you all come and celebrate me on last Monday. I can't believe it's been a week already almost and uh yeah i still feel like i'm settling into my skin a, a little it's it's weird today putting the rev before my name and announcing it out to the world so thank you all for your love and support over these last three and a half years people three and a half years <laughs> it's been it's been a little bit of a go we won't say how long the whole journey has been my friend lucy's laughing because she's been with me for over 10 years where this was something that i saw in my future that i wanted to work through and she's been my accountability partner to get me to remind me of what's most important and uh so so fortunate that i've i've got that support from the community and outside friends so today my talk is called, what is it called? It's called Dropping the Mask. Dropping the Mask. So what made me think about dropping the mask and putting our light underneath a bushel sometimes and hiding in is about that authenticity, about showing up as who we really are in every moment. And you know, that can sometimes be a little bit challenging as I know for myself, I can hide behind that mask and just kind of stay and I can seem like the well put together person, you know, the one who maybe has things together, but yet underneath sometimes that's not always what's going on in my life. And, you know, I do this practice uh, that Reverend Champion introduced to us a year and a bit ago about you know, every morning I write down, I'm, it's the, uh, from Melody Beattie, the miracle practice about writing down kind of those negative things that maybe happened the day before. And I write it down saying, but the first line has to be, I am grateful for. So I'm grateful for all those negative little things, whether maybe it's a fight with my husband or something happened with my kids, whatever it could be, but it's embracing that, embracing those things. And the shifts that I've had by my throughout my day by letting go some of that things and just able then to show up in authenticity around yeah you know what sometimes life isn't always what it seems on the outside it's not it's always what it seems i love what brene brown says for her definition of authenticity she says authenticity is the daily practice of letting go who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are and embracing who we are and isn't that if we put down those masks that we maybe wear and and they've served us they've helped us in lots of different ways those masks it's not to make yourself wrong if you've got a mask or you've worn it you know embrace that it's it is perfectly okay because it has served us in some way or form throughout our life so last week, you know, I talked about being yourself about because everyone else is taken and it is that we talked about recognizing that we are one with that one that first tenant. There's one mind one love one universal divine mind that first opening of our what we call our affirmative prayer is that we are connected, we are connected to everything everything all around us. And then we talked about compassion and having that self compassion and compassion for where everybody is or whoever is showing up in your life and what they're going through. And then we talked about courage. The courage to be vulnerable 
the courage to walk that path is the spiritual path. When you come to science of mind, you know, it's not the easiest path, this philosophy, this faith, this way of life, because it, it calls you to do that inner work, to do that deeper dive. And, and I know, let me tell you, over the last three and a half years, there's been a lot of deeper dives that I've done <laughs> throughout. But what I really am curious about, and I don't know how it'll come across, but last week I, I'd watched Reverend Karen Eisenhower and she from New Vision Center, and she had saw a quote from Glennon Doyle about how it is, it's our job to disappoint others wacky right our job to disappoint others so that i avoid disappointing myself so that i avoid disappointing myself what a concept what a i i'm still grappling with that one because you know the mask that i wear of that i'm i'm a good person i i'm a good daughter or i'm a good friend i never want to disappoint anybody I don't want to disappoint people. So I maybe sometimes will, I'll hear that niggle in my head, that little, mm, Tamara, maybe you shouldn't do that. But you know what? I sometimes still do it. I sometimes still do it. So when we're wearing our masks, you know, actually, I'll, let's tie it to science of mind a little bit. And I love how that we we can wear those masks at different times for different reasons, and we wear masks for fun during holidays and parties, or when we're in a theater, Mardi Gras, um, and during the pandemic, we all wore masks to prevent infections. But again, they're not all those physical masks. Those are those things that we can see on the outside, but there's also those ones, those masks that we put on so that we're showing up in a way that we think that we need to be. So, and it's like in nature, if you think of in nature of life to fully express itself and every living being has that impulse because of life operating through it, and like when nature, it stirs and wakes itself from the winter, reaching out to express through the new growth and its glory to be seen. Each one of us has that desire to be seen and known as who we are. So I'm thinking of spring, right? We just sprung ahead. So here we have this opportunity to express ourselves again in a different way. But yet, there's also that piece of us at the same time where we want to hide and protect ourselves because showing up vulnerability in vulnerability can be a little bit on that scary side. I mean, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to show up that I'm looking. Somebody might have this opinion or that opinion of me. You know, and it's interesting because animals in nature they can camouflage themselves. They can be right in the open and camouflage themselves and blend in. And yet that does kind of what we do when we protect our heart, when we, when we show up in that mask, in that place of not necessarily um, our true authentic selves. But when we wear masks, and we keep parts of ourselves hidden that deserve to shine. Because we're all that unique, individualized, one spirit of that one mind. We are here to be our best shining example of who we are. And each one of us is important. Each one of us has a message. Each one of us doesn't know how we show up in the world may affect somebody else that we might not even be aware of that kind gesture that saying something, the kindness that Ivan talked about in his song, when we can offer a sincere thank you or hey you look fabulous today. 
I, I don't know about you, but I, I do that a lot of times when I'm in a store, or I'm walking down the street, if I see somebody, I want to offer that, you know what, that that sweater or that looks really beautiful on you. And, and it's amazing the shocked looks I get sometimes from people that because I'll do it to people I don't even know. And it's so important that we I, I'm showing up in my vulnerability at that time by saying something, but we don't know how that's going to affect that person that day. So masks that we wear, the mask that we wear when we show up to the outside world. And that's when I can do that thing and ask them, let somebody else know what I think or what I see in them. That's, that's letting that mask down a little bit. And that creates that connection. So when I'm showing up in my authenticity, then I can allow others to show up in theirs. And I, I don't know about you, but growing up, trying to fit in, you know, they we were talking about mask. And I know for me, I considered it actually more like a box. I would have a box for how I would be at school. I'd have a box for how I'd be at home. I'd have a box with maybe how I was with my boyfriend at the time, or I would have a box with my grandparents. So I had all these different little boxes all around that I would show up in. So those boxes to me were like my mask. So I could show up at school and more confident and, and goofy way or with my friends, I could show up in my quirkiness and my little bit being wacky sometimes and that was fine. But there was also the mass of that I, I'm hiding here that I don't want people to know how scared I am. So I'm just going to exude more confidence. Um, a time I can think of is when I was managing at the bank, you know, I had 15 people underneath in, in my, you know, in my position that reported into me. And I was like 24. I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I hadn't been super trained in how to lead people through. So it was really scary, but I couldn't at that time, being that young person, I was like, oh, I can't let them know that I'm scared, that I don't know exactly everything that's going on. But I think back now and wonder what my experience of leadership would have been like if I actually would have just said, hey, you guys, let's work together. Let's let's you know show up i'm a little bit nervous i want to make sure that we're doing the right things that i'm handling everything the right way what can we do together to move forward what a different experience that might have been so ernest holmes says life is not something to be endured it is to be lived in joy and in fullness without limit to be lived in fullness without limit. So that is our light to be revealed, not concealed. And you, I don't know about you, but when I'm hiding behind that mask and am wearing, or the, I, I like Brene Brown also calls it her armor. She puts on, she dons on, you can imagine that night, you know, with the armor, putting everything, all the metal and how heavy that is walking around. But that keeps me what I think is safe. But is it really keeping me in living the life that I want? And isn't walking around with all that armor, those masks, I don't know about you, but I get, I get a little exhausted sometimes with it. I'm like, oh my gosh, so tired, so tired. And then when I get home and then I can take all of it off and just flop on the couch. <laughs> And then it feels so much lighter. It feels so much lighter. It takes a toll on us when we're working on being to others what we are not or who we think they want us to be. Because, you know, we can wear these masks or hide sometimes because maybe our own thoughts and our own feelings, we don't accept them. So that goes back to that last week about compassion, having compassion. 
And as I said earlier, those masks, you know, they maybe helped us in certain situations when we were young. Um, maybe if you grew up in an alcoholic family, you had to be in control. You had to have that mask on to keep yourself safe, to know how things were going to be. So if you kept, I had that mask on and nobody could see nothing t- attached to me. Okay, this is this might be a little bit too much information for you guys, but I know there's a point when I was young and if I was going to get into trouble and my my dad or somebody would come in to to give me heck and maybe at the time this is back in the day people when you know sometimes you got spanked doesn't happen anymore I know but back in the day maybe and I I put that mask on because if I was in trouble and I needed to move through. I, you know what I would do? This is horrible to say, but I would laugh. So if my dad spanked me at the time, I would laugh because I didn't want him to see that I was hurting. Let me tell you, that wasn't the smartest move. <laughs> it wasn't the smartest move. My, my mom would sometimes say, why did you just, why do you do that? Do you just get them going a little more? But it was just that way that I felt that I could protect myself, that I could keep my heart in check and keep myself so that I felt in control and that I knew what was going on. You know, the other thing I was thinking about masks is too, is that they can keep us tied to the past. You know, when we're wearing them, that when we put that mask back on, we can continue to play that part of that past story that we've had. That it's it's that past tense, that story that we've been carrying around with us. But if we, you know, to step into our present truth of who we actually are right now, I'm not that same person that I was when I was younger with my dad. We've developed a different relationship now because I've changed and I've been able to open up my heart more with him. So to step into our present truth and power, we're asked to be courageous and vulnerable. And to put down that mask, we must speak our truth and be who life knows us to be. And I know one of our practitioners, Jill, she always says, is I think a, a quote from uh, Michael Singer, Life knows what it's doing. Life knows what it's doing. So it's, it's in that willingness to show up and be vulnerable and let people in. And rather than, I don't know, does it, has anybody grown up thinking that vulnerability was a weakness? Yeah, I see some Ned's nodding, yeah. Right? But that the truth is that is where our connection that is where our love and where our joy is so the risk we face when we start to put down our masks and if we were to put it down and be courageously vulnerable and allow some of those hidden parts of us to be seen and even if it feels awkward or anything like that, that it's just showing that you care or maybe you need help with something. Again, that whole piece that I talked about earlier in my process of becoming a minister, I had help. I asked for help. Lucy, remind me, what is it that I say I really want? So it's, it's that being vulnerable and showing up, and that's where our connection with others show up with us that we can then step out into the community. And how lucky are we in this spiritual community at CSL White Rock that we have people in this like-minded teaching that we know that we can turn to and say, hey, I'm struggling right now. Can you pray? Can you just walk with me? And can you know for me that truth that I am spirit having this human experience right now? So it's good to open up and feel our feelings and show up and be able to be who we say we are. 
is the thing is in, in our society right now, it's easy to put that mask on and it's easy to numb or, you know, maybe have that glass of wine or have it, whatever it is, maybe it's shopping, maybe it could be any number of things that we do so that we feel better about ourselves. But then, but really, does it? You know, the thing I heard about when I was listening to a podcast with Brene Brown, and she talks about when we numb ourselves by doing some of these things that we do, the thing is, we don't just, we can't just numb those shadows, those bad feelings. <laughs> I wish that was the way we could. But the thing is, we also then numb the joy, that love, that awe that goes on in life. So it's important that we, we take small steps when we're taking off those masks and that we can feel safe and do it in a way that works for you. And sometimes, again, going back, asking for that help. Maybe you can get help in <clears throat> removing the masks. It's a big topic a big topic, this vulnerability, showing up authentically, being who we really say we are, and whether we think people will like us, not like us, do whatever that piece is. But I know that when I show up authentically, people are drawn to me. And I know that I'm drawn to people who show up authentically. It's just that that energy that you can sense it. I think you, probably everybody's walked into a room and just automatically saw somebody or heard them speak and you're like, oh, I want to get to know them. And those are those people showing up in that authentic heart space. So today I encourage you to be vulnerable, to practice being vulnerable, to step into the courage of being vulnerable and making sure that, you know, do it with people you trust. If this is just new for you, being vulnerable and showing up in a new way, make sure that you're doing it with people you trust. It's not something I would say just go out and automatically do anywhere with anybody. You know, make sure that you're safe. So show up, be authentic, and see if your experience of connection and community starts to shift. And if that, and see if you can seek all that is opening up for you in that vulnerability. So as it's from our authentic expression and connection that we can experience the love, compassion, and connection that we all seek and deserve. Everybody deserves it. Everybody. So I want to end with an affirmation for you for this week. I was going to share it, but I think I'll just say it. And say with me, I know I'm going to be saying it. everybody's on mute. But this is the affirmation I'd like you to take with you this week. I have the courage to be vulnerable and let my light shine. Let's say that one more time together. I have the courage to be vulnerable and let my light shine. Because everyone, the world needs you. The world needs your light and your love. So on that, let's take it into prayer. Knowing that there is one life, one love, one universal divine mind, and that divine mind is operating right here, right now, in through myself and in through everybody on this call and in through our full community outside as eric talked it is that expandingness of love that goes through across the oceans it is all things and i know that each of us are connected with that one thing we're each that little seed in the spring sprouting up 
and expressing in the world. So today I claim for all that love, that joy that is wanting to birth through and express through each of us. I know it, I feel it, and I am so grateful for this opportunity to birth forth into joyful wonder of this world and to know that I am living in a loving, vibrant world that works for all. So with my heart full of gratitude and joy, I release these words to the law of mind, knowing right action is already happening. It's already done. We are cultivating that connection with the divine. I let it be, and so it is. And thank you everybody for being here today with us. And now is the time, if you really appreciate and, and enjoy being here with us and enjoy our center and all of the gifts that we share with each other, um, it is the time that we are solely funded by your donations. So this means that your monetary gift is deeply valued. Every dollar receives received helps provide the inspiring messages, our spiritual lessons, our music, our personal support offered by your minister, your Reverend Tamara Rosender, and the practitioners. Your don donations make our work possible. We, what we freely give to life returns to us in multiplied abundance, as you know that. So thank you for your generosity. So if you want to show your appreciation today and you like this, please donate. You may wish to join me in putting your hand on your heart now. And here's the thing. Divine love within blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. Thanks for putting that screen up. And here's the ways to donate. You can see that on screen. We still take checks. Yes, checks work. E-transfer. Um, lots of ways to donate. Um, we, we just put it as a monthly donation. We, we don't even have to think about it. My husband and I just automatically do that, it, especially since COVID happened and you're not there to be in person and handing over something. So that's really helpful to do that. So 